We now have only to make the two purlin braces and the lower cord or tie beam to have all our parts. Lay out and cut these pieces in the same way that you did the principal rafter and king post. Place the material on skids or horses, wedge the flat side onto a level position, then square a line around the lock. In case the procedure for this has been missed, we will go through the details again. Mark the horizontal and vertical center on each end. Draw a level line and a plumb line through these centers. Do both ends of the piece, then snap center lines onto each of the four sides. This is a standard preparation that would be used for most roof parts. Now we will square a line around the log. This line will be at the top end of the brace and need only be a short way onto the log. The final tenon will be only 30 millimeters long, but we have set out about 60 millimeters to make it easier to cut. Place a mark about 60 millimeters from the top end and square this across the log. Do this both ways from the center. Use a sharp pencil to get a thin line. Pin a straight edge to this line or get an assistant to hold it. Place a square on the line on one side of the log and bring it up to touch the straight edge. Be sure that it is standing vertically. Slide the square back about half a millimeter and place a mark across the center line. Do the same from the other side. Roll the log 180 degrees, then pin or hold the square to one of the side marks. Align your second square with the center line on the top flat and bring it up to touch the square that is pinned to the side of the log. Be sure that the side square is standing upright, then mark and square off the line across this flat. If you roll the log up onto its side, you can use a flexible straight edge to join the three marks and complete the line around the side. Score this line while it's in this convenient position. Roll the log to do the other side, then place it on the flat to lay out the tenon. The tenon is 100 millimeters wide, or 50 millimeters on either side of the center line, but it is 200 millimeters long, the same as the width of the material. So you will be oh, cutting only the two sides. Draw these lines. The specified dimensions should match up very well. Then score the shoulder and cut away the side piece that has been marked with hatched lines. one halfway through from each side. Cut right on the line and be careful not to overcut at the tip of the bar. Roll the log to complete the cut.
Again, roll the log onto its side and clean up your new tenon. Do both sides, then lay out and cut the final length of the tenon. It should not be necessary to score this cut. Now check your specifications for the length and measure it onto the center line. Because your line on the other end is accurate, you can measure from that end for all four sides. Drop back 100 millimeters and draw a line around the log. Measure in the width of the tie beam on the end of this piece and cut this flat back to the line you have just made. The slope cut will become the scarf after the truss has been assembled. On the side, Come back to your original length measurement and square this off from the center line. Join these lines across your new flat and rejoin the center line. Draw in the angle of the cut. We have already checked to be sure that the material is indeed 200 millimeters wide. Otherwise, we would measure that width on the back end of the flat and extend our cut lines through the intersection.
Locate the end cut for the tenon by adding 50 millimeters to your cut line. Then cut this out in a logical way. Dress this tenon to size with a sharp slick and the purlin brace is finished. You can check the width with a template or it is possible to obtain an accurate fit by close attention to the layout and measurements. You will need two purlin braces and the second one should go very quickly. Check the dimensions of the purlin braces to be sure that they are correct, then make the